Welcome to GSA Connects Cast. I'm here with Ray Wells. He's a research geologist for the US Geological Survey. Ray, thank you so much for joining us. I have to thank ask, you. what went into creating this map? Well, this is a map of uh, sort of the Portland uh, metro area and surroundings. The geologic map is uh, pretty big. It's uh, 2,500 square miles about 51 seven and a half minute quadrangles, for those who know. And uh, it took, there's 14 co-authors, and it took about uh, 20 years of intermittent work by all of these people uh, to make the map. So it took a great deal of time. Uh, it took a lot of uh, on the ground, boots on the ground type of mapping. It actually started before we had uh, LIDAR and GPS and all of that, but we finished with uh, using high resolution terrain mapping, particularly in areas of faults. And, um, and we used GPS, of course, once we finally had it available to us. But mostly boots on the ground, people actually looking uh, at the uh, outcrops at the surface and using the subsurface data uh, to, uh, to interpret what's happening in the basins. That's great, that's great. How yeah. does having a map like this benefit the citizens of the region? Well, the, the map uh, uh, basically helps us uh, understand uh, the geologic hazards of the area. We can improve our geologic hazard assessments. And it also covers a lot of important resources uh, like water resources. And there's actually a natural gas field up here in the northwest corner that is actually used for gas storage now. Um, there are water resources in the basins. Uh, so there are many uh, different things that the map can be used for. Uh, and its primary function, the primary reason it was done, was to improve our earthquake hazards understanding of the greater Portland metropolitan area. Well then, speaking of hazards, does this help? Does this map then help us prepare for the "quote unquote" big one? Actually, even though the big one occurs offshore, you know, uh, 60 or 70 miles offshore here from where we are, uh, the um, the different geologic units that this map shows respond differently to seismic waves passing through the region, and so they're going to shake differently from place to place. And so soft sediments along the Columbia River, for example, are going to shake more than hard rock uh, in the uplands, for example. So the distribution of these materials plus the geophysical data that geologists collect in each of these different units will help us understand the distribution of shaking uh, during the big one. Can you stress the importance of how having an accurate map like this uh, potential for mapping out potential areas of geological hazard? Well, for example, all along this side of the map here, there's a large fault zone, these dark lines that run along here, all the way through the map and off to the south. This is the Gales Creek Fault Zone. And it was really poorly understood and poorly mapped before this map. There's a whole new fault system, uh, fault uh, strand in the Gales Creek Fault that was previously unknown. There are multiple strands that step over through this area, and this fault turns out to be an active fault. For example, it goes, it goes uh, through Scoggins Dam right there, and the Bureau of Reclamation are very interested in, in improving the structure of that dam, and they've done seven or eight trenches across the fault looking for evidence of recent activity, and they found it. This fault has had at least three earthquakes in the Holocene, and so this is a seismic source for the, for the urban area, and previously its activity and actual location was poorly known. That's fascinating. So your research brings new light on this Gales Creek fault, fault mm -hmm. which yep. affects the Portland metro area. Right. Fascinating. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, well thank you so much for your time. And, You're welcome. Uh, coming and explaining this, really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.